How to measure curves for flat top chains. The purpose of this video is to show you how to measure existing conveyor corner tracks for retrofit or repair. These curves are most often found at commercial bakeries and beverage plants. Usually, maintenance at the plant will diagnose and identify curves that need to be replaced. Tip-offs are increased noise, bottles tipping over, or flights that are cracked in lifting off the wear strip. Before you begin, be sure to follow all company and plant safety protocols. Wear personal protective equipment and lock out all machinery. Other considerations when on site. Take some time to plan on where and how you will measure. Oftentimes, there will be limited space and you will have to maneuver in tight areas. The production line will have to be shut down, so it's best to measure during off hours. If that's not possible, you'll want to make sure you have a plan to get in and out as quickly as possible so as to not hold up production. Come prepared with the tools you'll need. At minimum, you'll need a flexible tape measure, a straight edge or regular tape measure, a protractor or protractor app, and an arc calculator app or website. It is also helpful to have a second person on hand to help you measure. It's best to engage maintenance personnel on this project so they understand the importance and challenges of getting accurate measurements. The dimensions needed to quote slide tracks plastic chain tracks can be found on the Slideways website at slideways.com. All of that information can be found by taking a few measurements. Here is what we'll be measuring. Width and thickness or height of the track, the chain number and width, the arc length, the cord length, the curve angle, the rise, and the tangents. Measuring the width. To measure the width of the curve, lay a tape measure across the width of the track. You only want the dimension of the track. Do not add any guarding or frame edges. Measuring the thickness. To measure the thickness of the track, take a tape measure and measure from the bottom to the top of the track. Next, we'll determine the chain number and width. You may recognize the chain type upon visual inspection. If not, ask the facility what type of chain they are using. If you are unsure of the chain type, flip the chain over. On the back of the chain should be the model number. Next, we'll find the radius. For all examples in this video, we will be measuring the outside of the curve. You can also measure the inside of the curve. Measuring both the inside and outside dimensions can be helpful in verifying your data. Time for geometry class refresher. What is a radius? A radius is a line that goes from the center point of a circle to the edge of the circle. You can calculate the radius if you know at least two of these other dimensions. Arc length chord length, curve angle, and or rise. Before we can start to measure, we have to find the two curve endpoints. These two endpoints are where we will start and end all of our measurements. In method one, run a straight edge along the outside of the curve to find where it sits flat. That is an endpoint. In method two, Run a straight edge along the straight section of the track leading up to the curve. Where it starts lifting from the track is an end point. Now that we know where the end points are, we can get started with our measurements to find the radius. First, we'll measure the arc length. Using a flexible tape measure, measure on the outside of the track from end point to end point. This is the arc length. If the track has tangents, do not include them in this measurement. We'll go into tangents later in this video. Next, we'll measure the chord length. What is a chord? A chord is the length between two points on a circle. For this, you'll want to take a straight edge or tape measure and measure in a straight line from end point to end point. 
Next, let's measure the curve angle. Sometimes you'll be able to visually identify a curve as 90 or 180 degrees, but other times you'll have to measure the angle. This is often the case with 30 or 60 degree curves. To measure the curve angle, you'll need two straight edges or tape measures and a protractor. Lay down the two straight edges parallel to the straights leading up to the curve. Measure the angle where the straight edges intersect with a protractor. This is the curve angle. Another measurement you can use to find the radius is the rise. The rise is the height from the chord to the curve, or arc. Now that we have a combination of two or more dimensions of arc length, chord length, curve angle, and or rise, we can calculate the radius. The easiest way to do this is to use an arc calculator app or website. You will input two of the dimensions into the calculator and it will give you the rest. While you are physically measuring the curve, we recommend getting more than two measurements so that you can verify your dimensions with the arc calculator. For instance, if you measured arc length, angle, and chord length, put only the arc length and angle in the calculator. Look at the results to see if the chord length calculation matches what you physically measured. Keep in mind that you may need to round to the nearest number. While we now have the radius of our curve, curves for chain are specified by the centerline radius. The centerline is the midpoint of the chain. So the centerline radius is the radius plus or minus half the width of the curve. For example, if you measured the outside of the curve, the centerline radius is the radius you calculated minus half the width of the curve. Conversely, if you measured the inside of the curve, the centerline radius is the radius you calculated plus half the width of the curve. Here's an example. We have calculated the outside radius of this curve to be 28 inches. We measured the width of our track as 8 inches. Half of 8 inches is 4 inches, which is our center line. 28 inches minus 4 inches equals a center line radius of 24 inches. If you have a standard curve with no tangents, your measurements and calculations are complete. You have all the dimensions you need to request a curved slide tracks quote with slideways. What if your curve has tangents? Let's start with what a tangent is. A tangent is a straight line that extends the curve. You can see the diagram on the left showing tracks with and without tangents. Tangents need to be measured and noted on the quote request. The tangents are usually equal lengths and found on both ends of the curve. It's possible for the tangent to be on one side of the track only, but this is rare. Measuring curves with tangents can seem tricky but it's not. You must know the endpoints of the curve to take measurements necessary for an accurate result. Tangents are measured after all the curve measurements have been taken, so you'll already know where the endpoints are when you measure the curve. As we mentioned with arc length, a common error is to include the tangent length in the arc length. This will give an incorrect result. Measure tangents from the curve endpoint to the end of the tangent. You want to measure both sides. You now have all the dimensions you need to request a quote for slide tracks from Slideways. You now have all the knowledge you need to measure conveyor corner tracks for retrofit or repair. If measuring curves seems like a complicated process, Slideways is here to help. Did you take measurements but aren't confident they are correct? Tell Slideways the dimensions and we'll send you a template out of wood or cardboard. Lay the template over the existing track to see if the radii match. Still unsure? Slideways can remotely walk you through the process or send one of our application engineers on site. 
At Slideways, we reduce friction on your machinery and in your operation. 